Welcome to Avtar's Daily Devotions. This week we've embarked on a journey to explore the heart of prayer in the first half. And in the second half we're going to talk about the heart of justice and mercy that Jesus embodies and how he calls us to represent him. We've, if you've been tracking with us, we've explored yesterday what it means for us to explore prayer in the midst of a hard situation that we're invited to commune with God, especially when we're going through a trial. We encourage you to watch, watch that video if you haven't already. Today we're going to talk about something very honest and real. Does God even listen to our prayers? How do we deal with unanswered prayers? How do we deal with doubts? And for that we turn to Psalm 13, where we find language for the anguish that we feel written in the scriptures themselves. And you will see why. This is David from verses 1 to 3. How long will you forget me forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with the anguish in my soul, with the sorrow in my heart every day? How long will the enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord my God, restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. The current pandemic and the resulting lockdown may have made these words of the psalm real and tangible. I'm sure all of us can look at the psalm and cry prayers to God, say, how long, O God, shall we wait? How long that this invisible enemy will have the upper hand on us? How long, O God, before I meet my loved ones and my friends? How long, O God, before I have to stop worrying if I'm going to get my next paycheck? How long, O God, are you going to turn to us and answer us? To be sure, this may not be the only time in your life that you've prayed prayers like that. There may be other situations where you've cried to God and waited for His, His answered prayer. And thankfully, we see in Scripture an invitation to be brutally honest and vulnerable with our doubts with God. In the midst of doubts and unanswered prayer, we're invited to grieve to God and fall God word in our doubts. We're invited to grieve towards him. Even if our complaint is to him, we're called to complain and fall Godward while having our doubts towards him. In fact, scriptures tell us that God does not despise our doubts. In, in, in Isaiah 1, we, we read how God tells people, come, let us reason together. He invites us to reason with him because he, he likes to converse with us even if our accusation is against him. To be sure, we are also told that while we are invited to scrutinize God and put him under a microscope, we are also invited to doubt our doubts because they don't always come from a healthy place. And how do we know that there is a healthy place to process doubts and grieve to God? Because scripture tells us about it. Scripture gives us stories and examples of people who did that and how God came through for them. In fact, we see how Jesus dealt with an answered prayer. In Matthew 27, he cries, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, David cries out, God, how long will you turn the other way? How long will you turn your face away? We know in the Gospels that the Father turned his face away. As Jesus was on the cross and he surrendered his life in the midst of an answered prayer. You see, Jesus prayed, Father, if possible, let this cup pass me by but not my will, but yours be done. In the midst of grief and unanswered prayer, Jesus fell Godward and he, and he leaned on his father, even though that led him to the cross. And even sometimes in the midst of unanswered prayers, it may feel like, as God's not answering, it may feel like it is taking you to cross-like moments in your life. That's not the end of the story. What is the purpose of unanswered prayer? You see, scripture tells us that just like Jesus encountered unanswered prayer through unanswered prayer God has a purpose because of Jesus death on the cross even the suffering experience as a result of unanswered prayer has a redemptive plan and in time God makes all things work together for good Jesus on the cross died for the ways in which we see uh, anguish and grief and we don't fall Godward but we lean in on our own understanding for that sin, Jesus 
died on the cross and he hung on the tree for all our past, present and future sins. He drank the cup of God's wrath so that you and I don't have to. And today, because of that, we have the privilege of falling Godward in our unanswered prayer. Friends, in this pandemic, you may have a lot of doubts and unanswered prayer and you're invited to fall Godward. But I also want to encourage you with one scripture that Jesus told his disciples in John 16 verse 33. He says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. Listen to what he says. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. For I have overcome the world. I have a couple of questions for us to reflect on even as you process what we have talked about so far. Where do you turn to to express your doubt, grief and sorrow? How can you respond to God's invitation to fall Godward even while doubting Him? Isn't it beautiful that you can doubt Him and still depend on Him? Let's pray. Thank you Jesus that you leaned in on the Father even though it led you to the cross. Teach us God that even though depending on you may seem like we are going through cross-like moments in our lives, we ask that you will help us to turn to you and fall Godward in our doubts and in our unanswered prayers. In Christ's name I ask. Amen. Friends, I hope this conversation was meaningful to you. If you have more questions or any comments about this video, do leave us uh, in the comment section, we would love to hear from you. Do subscribe to our channel so you get more updates about uh, videos that we put up. Don't forget to tune into our Sunday morning service. As usual, guys, as long as this pandemic continues and even after that, let's be a non-anxious presence to a world that is so anxious and worried. Stay safe, stay calm and I hope to see you soon.